dropping gems from Keisha Christian. She's on a mission, sharing information, knowledge for soul, body and mind. Dropping gems, KeishaGems.com. KeishaGems.com. Welcome to episode three of Just Dropping Gems podcast. My name is Keisha Christian, holistic lifestyle coach, author, and owner of Keisha's Gems LLC. My co-host on this episode entitled, Baby, Let's Talk About Sex, is Professor Venice Richards. She is an award-winning educator, executive producer, and founder of Hashtag Pink and Sexy, Welcome to the show, Venice. I'm so excited to continue this conversation. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so um, on today's, like I mentioned, on today's episode, um, we're going to be talking about um, our sacred temple. On the last episode, episode three and part two of Baby, Let's Talk About It, um, Talk About Sex series, we talked about um, protecting yourself. So if you haven't heard or listened to that podcast, check it out. Um, we talked about use of condoms, abstinence versus celibacy. What's the difference? Um, getting tested, knowing your body. And um, we started our conversation, Venice and I, about um, recognizing your sacred temple great conversation. So if you haven't listened to episode two, be sure to check out that episode. Now, um, when we talk about um, our sacred temple, one of the things that um, came to mind was um, the R. Kelly um, documentary that came on or the documentary that came on about R. Kelly um, entitled Survi Surviving R. Kelly. Um, actually, Venice saw the um Venice saw the program but I didn't get a chance to see it. And um one of the things that came to mind while I was um while I heard about it and I was watching, you know, little um commentaries on the um the the uh, documentary um was about um inappropriate relationships. What came to my mind and the fact that um young girls are um could be very impressionable. And especially um, what I find in um, our society, for some reason, young African-American girls are looked upon as older. And um, sometimes they even, if a man um, who's um, years older than them, say uh, if the, the young lady is 14, and um, the young man might happen to be in his early 20s or whatever, a lot of times the, um, the young lady is looked at the one as being fast. Um, and we don't look to the man. We look, as, we look at the young lady as um, tempting the man. Or um, she's the one that threw herself on him. So we really don't pay attention to these inappropriate relationships. And um, what I feel is, though, we need to have this conversation. And um, I also feel as though sometimes women in their um, homes, or however they're growing up, they're not um, really taught to, to respect and to understand how sacred their body is, how sacred their temple is. So this is something that Alma um, came to my mind. Venice, your thoughts? You know, what I thought was interesting in watching the documentary, um, and what I've also heard um, commentary on from people who saw it, it was this thing of um, men um, that aren't, or boys, I should say, that that seem to not be taught what it means to have a sacred sacred temple. That's kind of what I <laughs> what I kind of gathered, and what other people um, that were watching it saw. It's like you know, um, women are playthings, and men respecting your body means sharing it with every single woman you come across and even young girls who may not even want your attention you, you're going to share it with them too because that's that's honoring your body and and that's the opposite of what 
you know, honoring your sacred temple is really about. You know, um, there's no respect and no no dignity and no integrity in that. But yet and still, that seems to be the message. Like, if you're a young boy and you're growing up, the thing is, is, oh, well, you know, you need to have notches on your belt and you need to, you know, go sow your royal oats and, you, you know, all that foolishness. And it's like, okay. And and the girls are supposed to sit there with blinders on and, and be cool with this whole misogynistic approach to life and love. Mm-hmm. And and that's a, a huge problem, and it leaves us very vulnerable. If you're if you're raising a a, a girl, what do you tell your girl? <clears throat> you know, what do you tell your girl? What do you um? What are you supposed to say? Like it, it's okay for these older men or for these young boys or even family members to just do and say whatever they want with you? Like, what what's the message that's supposed to be received? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what you say. What matters is what you allow and what you do. You understand? So if Mm -hmm. we're receiving these messages that it's okay to just allow people to do whatever they want with us, how are we then to blame when things get out of hand and you have a situation like a surviving R. Kelly situation? How, How do you then turn around and blame the victim when clearly you can see who the victim is? You know, I just don't see any honor in that. You know, but unfortunately, that's what happens. That's what I was mentioning. You know, the girl, um, they look at the girl as the one being fast and they mm-hmm. don't address the, um, the male in the situation. You know, right. so that's something that really needs to be taught in the home. And I like what you brought up, not just teaching the girls that their, their, um, their body is a sacred temple, but also teaching the boys too. Exactly. To have self-control, you know. Yes. And how to treat a woman like uh, a, a young lady like a young lady. You know what's interesting, Keisha, is um, as I was growing up, and you know, when you get to that coming of age period, like you're, you know, you're in college or whatever, and you see the outlandish behavior that you know, some people have, and you notice, like you look around and you see some of your friends that seem to not be able to control themselves mm-hmm. <laughs> around the opposite sex and all this other kind of stuff going on, and you're like, okay, wait a minute. At that moment is when you can make the decision. I chose for myself mm-hmm. that I will not be an animal. <laughs> I'm not going to govern myself by instinct alone. You know what I mean? I, I'm, yeah. I'm going to govern myself. What, what separates us from animals and, and, and humans, what, what makes us human is to be able to think, to, to be able to critically think about what it is we're doing before we do it. Mm-hmm. For some strange reason, I can't for the life of me. Is it just for the sensation of pleasure? Is it is it uh, just gratification alone? Like I don't know exactly what it is, but to me, it always seems as though people usually take the low road. Yeah, but you know, it has to do with instant gratification. That's what it is, yeah. and then and then they worry about the consequences later. So it's like mm-hmm. satisfying the need that they have now. Mm. They just worry about everything else later. Gotcha. Yeah, I really think that's what that is. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I also um one of the things that also came to mind for me, I know Venice and I have different differing opinions about this, but soul ties. Now, I feel as though this is just my opinion, but I do feel as though when um an older man gets with such a young girl, someone who has not, I mean, they're not quite a woman; they're still in their teens. So, let's say fourteen. And you have a man who actually wants to start a relationship with a a girl that age. I do believe that it kind of messes up the woman mentally a bit because they're getting with such an older man who has all this experience and this young woman who doesn't. And um, I do believe that when you, um, you have this, you are creating a soul tie there, especially for the young girl especially this is her first sexual experience and she believes that you know she loves this man and um and this man loves her and it doesn't work out you know what that could do to the young woman um to me i just think it's it's it's, um deplorable and it it just makes me feel really i don't even know how to say this makes me feel really sad when i hear about things like this and a young woman is not able to fully grow up and come into her womanhood as she should. Right. I agree um, with the aspect of, um, you know, when a much older man is, um, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, basically forging ahead with a relationship with 
um, someone significantly younger than, than they are, um, you know, that, 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 you know, could in fact be a teenager. This could in fact be her first experience. This could, you know, you're, you're, you are stunting her growth. Um, yeah, the jury's still out for me when it comes to soul ties. Cause I kind of feel like that's, um, um, like a fear-based type of a thing. And I don't really do well with fear-based things. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, as individuals, as adults, as grown people, when you do what you do, there are consequences. Um, I, and I know that, you know, spiritually there, there is a connection that is formed a bond. I understand that that's what's considered a soul, a soul tie, but I don't agree with the way that it's used a lot. A lot of times I hear people using like, Oh, you gotta be careful. It could be a soul tie. It's like, Oh, uh, okay. Um, we're here to connect with other people. I mean, I think that there, I don't know. I just feel like there's bigger consequences. There's, there's karma. There's other things. I hear that, what you're saying. I hear what you're you saying. Know? It can be used as a scare tactic, you know, as far as like, Oh, you know, um, I guess in the church, you know, right. to, to get, you know, to, when they talk about saving yourself for marriage or whatever, I see, I see your point. But it, okay. and I'm thinking about more so is like, you know, be careful who you're giving yourself to, because you're, that is a very sacred act. Like for me, okay. it's a very sacred act. And yeah. I am very careful. I just feel like I you got to be more realistic, mm -hmm. you know, just be more realistic in the use of the term. Like stop making it such a like far fetched, like, like it's, I, I have a friend that calls things spookisms. Let, let's, let's take the spookism out of it. Let's uh -huh. call it what it is. You know what I mean? Like, let's, yeah. let's be realistic about what it really is that we're talking about. You know, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's kind of how I look at soul ties. Whenever somebody says that, I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, I do agree with you definitely, Keisha, in terms of, you know, I, I feel like it is stunting the young woman's growth. Mm -hmm. And then she's, she's now, after that relationship, now she's stuck trying to figure it all out by herself you know, um, and it, it really does uh, lead to delays as she goes into adulthood because now mm -hmm. she never had a childhood. Mm -hmm. So now she's reliving her childhood while trying to be a woman now because you forced her into a stage that she wasn't ready for. Exactly. Especially if a child is now brought in, a child comes from that union. That's even, um, that's a whole nother story. Right, right. Yeah. So, I mean, like, so many of those things brought up, that's what brought up for me when I was listening to commentary about um, Surviving R. Kelly. I personally couldn't watch it, <laughs> so um, I just listened to commentary and spoke to people about the, um, about the show. All right, so let's move right along. Um, another thing that um, I wanted to um, talk about was um, dating for fun as opposed to dating with a purpose. Now, I know, um, I feel as though, like, when I was in my 20s, now I'm in my 40s, but I feel as though when I was in my 20s, that was the time I dated for fun. And at this stage in my life, I'm dating with a purpose. I'm not just dating for fun. Um, because, you know, it depends on what stage you are in your life um, when you are dating. And I'm not saying that if you're in your 40s, you shouldn't date for fun, because I don't know what stage a person is in their life because this is um, individualized. But for me, that's what I would be doing right now. I'm dating for a purpose. I'm looking for my, uh, my divine reflection, my life partner. Um, and when it comes to dating versus courtship, um, does anyone court anymore, Venice? Because I feel like that's something like, you know, they did back in my grandmother's time. <laughs> I don't know that's about you. Yeah. That's a good question. I think um, like some of us are so, and I always say some of us and I, I, or I say we, you know, because I, I don't exclude myself from anything because we're all capable of everything. Um, so, but some of us, we may have a tendency to uh, want to rush things along. So we skip steps. Mm -hmm. We skip steps. Um, and one of those steps that we normally tend to skip is courtship. So instead of courtship, we got net shits, net, net, Netflix and chill. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not about that Netflix and chill life. Like, no. <laughs> so I think that um, we have to basically define courtship for ourselves and we have to define dating for ourselves. I love to always say dating and having sex is two separate things. Yes, it is. 
<laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, it's just, you know, you have to, you have to show people how to treat you. You have to decide what dating looks like for you and what a courtship looks like for you. You have to make those decisions. And if you want to date for fun, um, because that's the area of life that you're in at that moment, okay, fine. But for me, the the days of dating wildly inappropriate people are over for me. Yes. So when <laughs> I do date, I definitely do date with intention. I'm definitely not, um, I'm not looking in the same circles. I'm not in the same circles that I would normally look to like a lot of times, you know, as um, like we usually date within our neighborhoods, within our, our blocks, within our, um, our, like if we're in a certain career, we date within our field, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, So my thing is to uh, possibly try to date up. You know, I want to see different things. I want to see, I want to, I want to experience different, um, you know, ideas and cultures and, and, you know, I want to, you know, be international quote unquote air quotes. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I have a question though, I don't mean to cut you off, but what do you mm-hmm. mean exactly by dating up? Dating up. I am not trying and, and I, every woman, you know, they have to define this for themselves, you know, but for me, I am not trying to. Uh, spend time with people who are not in a better position than me or trying to be in a better position than me. Um, So um, I'm an educator by by trade. So if I'm going to date, it's going to be someone, yeah, definitely an education, but maybe higher education. Maybe they're an administrator. Maybe they're, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking to just do things different. I want to always be in an area where I can learn. I always want to be um, in, a, in a situation where I can learn from the situation and grow from the situation and not stay stagnant. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. And when you tend to um, date your peers and when you tend to maybe reach, you know, down to date up, like when you try to do that kind of stuff, you end up usually losing a part of yourself and you end up having to rebuild yourself because you weren't, you, you weren't equally yoked. I mean, yeah. of, if I'm looking up and I'm with somebody who's looking straight ahead, we're not equally yoked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's kind of how I feel about it. And I know that that's different for other people. Other people will say, oh, well, you know, if somebody's struggling, ain't nothing wrong with you. Uh, no, I'm not that girl. I'm sorry. No. Um, I'm not <laughs> I stopped being a construction right worker, a contractor yeah. a long time ago. I'm not taking on any projects. I am, I thank you. I, I'm not a ride or die and I don't do projects well. Um, so I'm not, <laughs> um, you know, now if, if, if he has his own business, if he has a trade, if he's working it out, like you have to really be just on another level of thinking in order for me to consider you someone I would date. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's not about your profession. It's not about any of that. It's about, and it's not about how much money you make. It's, it's, although it is, but it's not really about any of that. It's really about your mindset. You know what I'm saying? It's it's all about that mindset. If a man, Mm -hmm. not that I want to cut you off, but if a man has a certain mindset, that um, abundance will be attracted to him. The money will Boom. Exactly. So, I mean, like, you don't have to worry about that. Because if you have a man um, whose mindset, especially when you talked about owning your own business, you're like, Mm -hmm. I would love to be with someone who has their own business and who I could build with. Um, right. and I know like, say they might not be, um, a millionaire, right. But mm-hmm. if they have, um, integrity and, and they are, um, and they're ambitious and, and they're, mm-hmm. and they're, um, they're goal driven, you know, mm-hmm. money will follow. Right. Most definitely. Follow, period. It, and that's what, I, that's what you, that's what you need. You know what I mean? And, and, and so that's where, that's where I draw the line. Like we all have our, our, um, our deal breakers. You mm-hmm. understand? And, and we should be firm on our deal breakers. Those are mine. Those are mine. And I, you mentioned one thing and that was integrity because you could, you could um, walk into the life of someone that has all of that, but they still have no integrity, mm-hmm. which means that you will have nothing but sleepless nights. Doesn't matter what he possesses or what you can learn from him. If he has no integrity, that will destroy whatever it is that you're trying to build. Yeah, it will. So definitely, so, those are the things I'm putting out in the universe. So yeah. if my divine reflection is listening. <laughs> Girl, yes, put yourself on display. Let him find you. 
<laughs> Let him find you, girl. Yes. So, you know, so I'm speaking out to the universe, you know. Exactly. So. And then one thing that you mentioned, um, I feel as though, especially for women, when we talk about our biological clock is ticking, right? I think that we put a lot of pressure on ourselves by creating unrealistic timetables. Like when we say, oh, I have to be married by the time I'm 30. I have to have my kid before I'm 35 because they say, you know, um, about, they talk about um, birth defects at that age, you know? So as women, sometimes we tend to put ourselves through these unrealistic timetables and we live we're kind of living in fear, like, oh, I'm running out of time. And like, we're on this treadmill, you know, oh, I have to get these things done by this time. I have to meet this man by this time. And I just feel as though when it's the time and when it's, um, when it's the, your divinely appointed time, it will come to you. So I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. With your time, it will come. And when if, if it's not your time, no matter how right the situation may seem, it just will not happen at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I do believe that that is what uh, we deal with, both men and women. Like we have these, we definitely have these unrealistic um, expectations, you know, um, about what we think our life should look like by a certain age. And um, I think that that is what brings on a lot of fear and anxiety. And uh, it, it definitely does uh, uh, uncover any mental issues that you may have. Um, I say it that way because, you know, when you're dealing with anxiety and depression, a lot mm -hmm. of that comes on because you feel like you're not where you need to be and you, you definitely like supercharge your nervous system by you know worrying about things that you know you are out of your reach and out of your control and that can set you into a spiral yeah exactly and a lot of times we don't really realize that and we continue on this same you know train of thought you know straight through like we never enjoy our teens our 20s our 30s we don't some of us don't start enjoying life until like we're 50s and 60s because we spend so much time worrying worrying that we are just not meeting some sort of expectation that it's it's just crazy so we have to really get out of that fear based thinking you know and really just accept the area that we are in life and enjoy the process. Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy every moment. Right. You know, so that whole biological clock is ticking thing for me. Um, I guess I kind of, I, I felt that way. Like, you know, when I was like in my early twenties and, you know, from the time I was like 18 to maybe 24, mm -hmm. I felt that way. And then I got a heavy dose of what that all looked like, what it really means. And I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm straight on that. But I couldn't say it out loud because to everybody else, that's the goal. That's what you need to achieve. You know what exactly. I mean? So I would talk a good game and be like, yeah, you know, I want to have kids, but you know, and I'll make the excuse, but you know, because of my illness, it have to be a really strong man that I have child with because da -da 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 -da. so it was clear that I did not want to necessarily do it. Mm -hmm. And I was, these um these uh parameters as to how it needs to happen if it were to happen you know what i mean but really all i was doing was saying no i don't really want to do this <laughs> no i went through that score <laughs> but you know you can't say that kind of stuff out loud because other people look at you crazy you know <laughs> how dare you be in your 20s or 30s and not want to have kids not want to get married not want to you know what i mean that you're exactly. supposed to want these things because people look, people look at me and be like, oh, you never wanted a husband. You never wanted to get married. And meanwhile, they're saying this to me after they done, they say all these horrible things about their husband. Like, yes. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> that is the funniest. They be like, oh, I wish. I wish he just shut up. I wish he died. Like, they just say the most awful things. Yeah. And then they turn around and be like, so when are you getting married? Never. Not after that speech. No. <laughs> <laughs> or when you hear them arguing, like when you hear your friends arguing with their husband or whatever. And then, yes. and then later on, they're like, oh, when are you getting married, Keisha? It, you no. Know. <laughs> And same thing with kids, same thing with kids. I hear nothing but the horror stories about mm -hmm. the breastfeeding and how my body still doesn't feel right after a year and this and that. I don't know. Like I just, I get the stories. I get the, I get the real to real. And, yeah, and, and I that, too. But then they turn around and say, when are you joining us? 
Yeah, right? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> Misery loves company. Not me, not me. <laughs> not me, not me. Sleep deprivation? No, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not doing any of that. Sorry. <laughs> I like, like, you like, I like I my like life. Sleep. Thank you. I like my sleep. Yeah, I like my sleep and my extra money in my pocket. That's, you know, that too. You know, they don't tell me. <laughs> they be, I swear they set you up, man. They be setting you up. Yeah, but, um, things are expensive, but you know, you find the right person and you with that, you know, I mean, those things are. I'll of, adopt. Okay. Thank you, know, you. I'm just saying when you, when you get with the right person, I think those things. Like, well, I'm going, I'm going according to um, successful relationships. I think even what my mom said, you know, when you meet the right person and you do, you know, you have a child with that person and it's, and they, and you both mm-hmm. um, share the workload. It's, it's not that hard according to successful relationships with people I've spoken to. So I get both sides. Of mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm sorry. Like I, I hear, I hear the successful marriages and and what they say and everything like that. But I just, I never believe, I never believe a word of it. I'm like, yeah, okay, that's. It sounds wonderful. It's a nice fairy tale. Thank you. <laughs> I always, that's how I end everything. It's a nice fairy tale. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. You know, I, I just, I'm sorry. I'm cynical. Forgive me. Don't be like me, y'all. Don't be like me. <laughs> <laughs> that is- at least you're being honest. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but your parents are beautiful, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Your parents are amazing. I love your parents. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the example I have, you know. But I've seen both sides. Oh gosh. So the last thing I wanted to talk about um, from this episode was um, sexual transmutation. And basically what that is, is um, taking your sexual energy and um, using it for creative energy. Now, um, one of the things that um, is very um, important to me, what I talked about is um, when we're talking about sacred temple is um, I'm very protective of my sacred space. So um, when getting to know someone or even getting into relationship with someone very protective and for me um sex is a very sacred act so um right now i'm practicing abstinence so for me using that sexual energy i put it into my business because basically that's what sexual energy is i'm a creative i'm a very creative person um, always coming up with ideas, and I just take that energy that I have and put it into my work. Um, as you, everyone knows, I'm an author, as I mentioned in the intro. I have my own business, Keisha's Gems, where I make so many things. I make soaps, lotions, um, jewelry, all sorts of things, and that's what I take my um, my energy and I put it into that, and just coming up with different ideas and concepts and things like that, uh, things I would like to do to further my business. I know at Venice, um, as I mentioned in the intro, she's an executive producer. She's also the founder of um, Hashtag Pink and Sexy and very creative mind as well. So Venice, how do you use um, tre- sexual, excuse me, sexual transmutation in within your, um, your life, your space? Well, um, as you say, Keisha, um, uh, that you're absent, absent, and so am I. Um, and I, I reserve my um, creative energy um, in several different, you know, ways. Um, you know, I'm a creative as well. You know, um, ever since I was a child, sing, act, dance. Um, as a teenager, wrote music, like you know, poetry is huge for me. Um, and so I take like my love for performing arts and everything like that, and just think of you know, different ways in which I can create things to um, not just uh, uplift me, but to like uplift my students, my former students that um, I'd work with um, in the school district that I, that I retired from. Um, Cause of course I, you know, I still keep in contact with all of them, the ones in Brooklyn and the ones in Long Island and whatever. So um, keep in contact I, with you. You always have like a posse with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, love my babies. I love my babies, man. I know, they grow. They love you too. <laughs> <laughs> they grow but they still check for dear old Miss Richards because yes. I'm old. 
But anyway, um, <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I believe firmly that, you know, you get, you have like whatever it is that's inside of you, that you have the power to create whatever it is that you want, mm-hmm. right? So I'm, I truly believe in alchemy, not in, not in the way that, you know, other people think of it, like, oh, take this stone and turn it into gold. But yes, take your ideas, take your thoughts and turn that into gold. Turn, exactly. Make that lucrative. Like, I'm a firm believer in that. And you can create anything that you want. You can manifest whatever you want. So mm-hmm. with that in mind, um, you know, I, I believe very, very, um, it's, it's very dear to my heart, you know, sexuality. Um, sensuality, spirituality, mm-hmm. those three S's, those three S's are very, very important. All right. Um, and when you have those three, that brings you to self-actualization because at the end of the day, we all want to get closer to God. That's the whole purpose. So when I harness all of my creative energy and I put that into, you know, my sexuality, sensuality, and spirituality, when I do that, I am transcending. I am getting closer to God. And that's the main purpose of that. And with all of that energy, I'm able to take that and I'm able to, you know, heal myself. I'm also able to, you know, put that into my work, which is, um, you know, hashtag pink and sexy. Um, it's a fundraiser for sickle cell that I do once a year. I'm able to, you know, manifest that into reality. Um, a fashion show. I'm able to, I might add, sorry. I had to do that beautifully. (laughs) I also am a peer romantic consultant because I believe very strongly in empowering women to take um, control of their sexual, you know, energy and, and to be safe, you know, about, you know, when, with their sex, I want everybody to really understand like how this whole thing works. And so I put my energy into that as well, you know, creating events, you know, uh, around women so that they can learn more about their bodies and teaming up with other business owners so that they can learn more about their bodies. I mean, I'm very passionate about these things. So I take my passion and I, I, and my, and my creativity and I put that my sexual creativity and I put that into creating and developing programs that will help the people that I love and that um, I see are struggling and people that may not have voices to help themselves. So you're so good at that. And the ideas you come up with, I must say very creative mind. Thank you. Yes, I have to say that very creative mind (laughs) and wonderful, a wonderful program that she has. Um, She puts on um, fashion show and um, when are you doing it this year in um, July? July 27th. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. July 27th. So it's really great. Um, hashtag so we're getting our designers and we're getting, we're getting our designers and our vendors and our sponsors and everything together now. Yes. Um, we just did our casting, our model casting call. So that was fun. Yes, so. that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to talk about who's going to be on the runway. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to let, I'm going to let, I'm going to let them talk about who's going to be on the runway. I'm going to yes, leave I'm that alone. one of the models at the fashion show. I wasn't the model. One of the models. Yes. 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 She's going to be my chocolate drop model. Yes. And she's going to be wearing her Pierre Romance Spike Venice lingerie. Yes. The and she's going to be the model. model. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. As Venice so. likes to say, be, bra- um, brains and beauty. <laughs> yes. Brains, beauty, and charm. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but I just, I just, this is something that I, I've really been tapping into, um, sexual transmutation. And um, mm-hmm. what I realized that now um, that I've been tapping into, I never really recognized how much of an artist I, I am. The fact mm-hmm. that I paint, I never did that before. Hmm. You know what I mean? And just making so many things now, like so many things will come to my mind. Um, I sew a little bit, I'm no seamstress, but I do own a sewing machine. So there's things that come to mind and I'll just do it and make it, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's an amazing thing. And um, to this point, I just make just about everything now. All my personal care products I make because I have my business, um, Keisha's Gems LLC where we make um, holistic products, skincare products, deodorant, all sorts of things I make. So I'm constantly doing research and that, that has to go, that goes along with some sexual transmutation, mm-hmm. taking and, that energy. And, and you also energy. empower people to take their health more seriously. Um, Cause you are my life coach. A lot of people don't know that is that she's my holistic life coach. Mm-hmm. So, and um, Keisha takes the time to really, um, 
help me understand what it is I need to do for my health and um, how to take care of my sacred temple, you know, um, and I'm really grateful for that, you know, so I, it, you know, at some point you have to make certain decisions for yourself in, in terms of, of how you're going to use your sexual energy. And if you can do that to bless somebody else's life, you know what I'm saying? Why yeah. not? Exactly. Well, and basically that's why I started this podcast too, because I wanted to, um, to share with people how to live holistically, mind, body, and spirit. Like I mentioned in another podcast, it's not just about what you put in your mouth, but it's also about what you're feeding your mind, what you're, what are you feeding your spirit? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And what are you doing physically to your, for your body, you know, as far as keeping um, fit and um, living to your greatest potential. So yeah. all these things um, are really important to me. And I just want to make sure I help people live their greatest version of themselves. Yeah. So then, you know what? There's an extra S that I did not mention. Oh, okay. And, and that's being satisfied. Okay. So you said sexuality. Sensuality. Sensuality. Spirituality. Spirituality. And then being satisfied. Satisfaction. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, in terms of being satisfied, just because you're abstinent does not mean that you go without, it just means that you're channeling, channel, channel, you're channeling your energy a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. You know, you may use maybe somewhere between maybe 20% of your sexual energy. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, you got to keep the wheels turning, of course, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you're not giving 100% of your sexual energy over or even more than that to um, another individual that may not use that energy the way that it needed to, it would need to be used in order to bless somebody else. Yeah, you're, yeah. Hold, you're holding on to the majority of your sexual energy, but you are still satisfied, dear. Mm-hmm. So Pure Romance by Venice, that's what I do. I teach people not I don't I don't only just teach them how to empower themselves um on with their sexual health but I also teach them how to satisfy themselves sexually mm-hmm. even if they're abstinent okay okay so I think that that's very important to mention you're not going without you're always completely satisfied you're just doing things differently okay so that it benefits you and what do you mean by that, Venice? You're doing things differently. Can you e- expound on that? Well, just because you're not having sex with someone else doesn't mean that you're not having sex with yourself. Oh, okay. Having sex with yourself. So we're talking about masturbation? We are talking about masturbation with toys. We're talking about, um, you know, lubes and and and. and you know, some fun things that you can bring into the bedroom so you can, you know, spend time discovering what you like. Yeah. So that when you do officially decide that you want to be with someone else, mm-hmm. you know exactly what your body requires in order for you. Exactly. To what, what you like. The what highest exactly. level. Yeah, a satisfaction. <laughs> When you meet yeah. your divine mate, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I would definitely love to go into that realm of talking about how to be all four, how to be all four things. If you have your spirituality, you know, this is this is how you honor your sacred temple. So I want to definitely get into that um, um, and, and really explore um, all avenues of that, um, especially... Um, the sexuality part of it and how to um, still be satisfied, you know, without compromising. Yes, Venice. I love it. So you know what? That sounds like another episode, episode four. Oh, you know what? Maybe that could be a special episode for Valentine's Day. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, girl. All right. How you love yourself on love month. Yes. 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 (laughs) All right. So you know what? We are going to um, check out that. Um, we're going to have a bonus episode, um, Who's Loving You, on February 14th. I thank you so much for um, joining us to listen to this episode um, of Baby, Let's Talk About Sex from the Dropping Dreams um, podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Any final words, Venice? 
That's all I got. Thank you for having me, Keisha. You are quite welcome. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Peace and blessings to you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to Just Dropping Gems Podcast. This episode has been sponsored by Keisha's Gems and Dropping Gems Books. Be sure to visit our website where we offer holistic solutions with the soul in mind. And check out my new book, Healthy Gems, Nourishing Practices and Self-Care Tips for Busy Individuals, available on Amazon or purchase an autographed copy on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.droppinggems.com. That's www.droppinggems.com. If you are interested in becoming a sponsor or advertising on this podcast, you can contact us at www.keishagems.com. That's www.keishagems.com. Or email us at keishagems at gmail.com. That's K-E-I-S-H-A-G-E-M-Z at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening. Much abundance to you.